Hey everyone, welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be taking a look at turning a slimline pen. Um, I've got a couple of these that I've got coming up soon that I'm looking to do as gifts for some friends and family. And uh, I figured I'd take you through the process of turning them the way that I turn them. So let me show you the blank that I'm looking at. Okay, so this is the blank. Um, in this case, it's going to be a basic slimline pen. Uh, I'm turning this one out of Zebrano, which is quite an interesting wood. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, very figurative grain in it, and uh, I really enjoy turning it. Only downside to it is that it's a very flaky wood and uh, can be a little bit tough to turn at times. So what I've done is I've already drilled and glued the tubes in the actual blank itself. Uh, I'll cover that again a bit more in detail in another video, but a fairly simple process though. Uh, what I do do with each of these is you'll notice that I mark the blanks. So in this case, you'll see there's a line running through the center and then there's the arrows indicating which side they go. Uh, that'll just help you with the alignment of the grain at a later stage. So that's a blank, drilled, been bored as well. It's all ready to actually go. Uh, so next thing to do is we'll mount that up on the lathe. Um, this is the kit that I'm going to be using for it. It's a gunmetal color, which I think will go quite nicely with the actual grain uh, color of the wood itself. Um, and we'll probably either do a micro crystalline finish on it or a CA finish. Um, so I'm going to get this mounted up on the lathe now and then we'll come back to it again on that. Right, so the pen mandrel that I'm going to be using to turn this pen the Penn State Industry uh, Morse Tape 2 and uh, that will fit right into the headstock of this lathe. Uh, nice stable one which allows you to actually adjust the length of the shaft that's sticking out so that you can have maximum support on your blanks. Okay so what we need to do is to get this guy all mounted up. So let's do that quick. All right. So remember the indications as to which way we're going to be turning it. So I'm going to be using the standard 7mm bushings on that. Pop that on there. Bushing between the two. And then with the grain facing the right way, we'll pop that other end on. Uh, for this side, I normally just add a couple of bushings just to actually space things out. Uh, there's different ways that you can get these mounted up on these mandrels. You can either use the included brass nut uh, to put the tension on it like that or you can use something like a mandrel saver um, which is what I have here in this instance um, if I could do this without knocking the camera mandrel saver is not my favorite option with this specific one because it has a little bit of play in the mandrel and any play at this end will translate into having a bad sizing on your actual bushings themselves so in this instance, I'm going to take that off and I'm going to just add on a standard cone live center and we will use the brass nut. Right, so we're back and we mount it up again. You'll notice that I've got the brass washer that's been attached to it now and I've also put on just a standard cone center on that one over there. That will be just inside the actual divot on the end of the pen mandrel. So one thing to bear in mind with these is you don't want to over tighten this because if you do you get to put flex on the actual mandrel shaft and you'll either do one of two things. You'll get the oval effect on it again or you'll bend the pen mandrel which in which case you're going to have that oval effect and they are really difficult to straighten again. Okay so we got to get down to roughing this and then taking a look at the rest from there. Right so I've got everything set up now. Um, I'm going to be turning the majority of the actual pen with this uh, Blackline Tools W uh, carbide cutter. Um, I'm going to cover these in a later video, um, do just a basic review on them, but for now this is a tool that we're going to be using. So I always turn my actual pens at maximum speed, uh, which is generally about 3000 RPM in my case. Uh, it just makes the turning process a lot quicker and easier to do. Also this is a very flaky wood, um, as you can actually to see by looking at the edges and the way that it's actually chipped. It's very old. Uh, I picked these up from one of the local lumber stores and uh, it's been hanging around there for a really, really long time. So this is very dry. 
but it finishes up quite nicely and it has quite a bit of character to it. So let's get some turning done. see where we are okay so obviously that end face is looking absolutely terrible um, on both sides uh, that's fine it won't be a problem once we've actually turned it down a bit more so let's get the rest of the bulk off of that and then we can look at the final shaping Okay, so it seems I made a bit of a mistake over here. Um, that silver bushing over there should be on the side over here. These are 7mm bushings, these black ones, but they're not exactly the same as the original ones that I have on there. So I'm going to swap these over and then we'll get back to doing the final shape. Right, so I'm back again. I corrected the bushings. I see we've got one of the silver ones in the correct place now. So silver ones on all three sides. This is a little bit hollow still, so we're going to need to take some of that out before we can do the final shaping of it. Um, so let's get back to it.
Right, let's take a look and see where we are. Get a little bit off on that one. It's fine that we can figure that out afterwards. The side needs a bit more work as well. We're looking good over here. And looking good over there as well. See a bit of the character of this wood actually coming out. It's normally not the type of wood that I would use for turning a slimline, uh, simply because the slimline takes away too much of the actual grain itself. Um, and then you end up, well, basically in this scenario where you've lost quite a bit of it, but it's still going to be a really nice looking pen at the end of it. Um, I think what I'm going to do with this one is to go with the micro crystalline wax. Uh, simply because you at least still get the the feeling of the wood grain afterwards and it uh, it doesn't have the the kind of plasticky feel that the CA glue does but it will still protect the wood better than any of the other kind of waxes so let's get this uh, sanded up and then I think we can get to the finishing Right, to do the sanding, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the lathe speed down a bit. Um, on this particular lathe, that's a manual process, so give me a second or two and I'll be back. Starting at 150 grit. Uh, this is going to be a slow and painful process, so I'll probably skip through the majority of it. Okay, so we've skipped through the sanding. Sanding is done now. So next thing to do is to actually clean up the blank. Uh, for this, we're going to use a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Ideally, you want to use a denatured alcohol on this type of application, but uh, denatured alcohol is practically impossible to find in South Africa unless you get the colored version, which is called methylated spirits. Um, but the downside to that is it's dyed purple and you really don't want to go and add purple to the blank. So let's just clean this off a bit. Start getting an idea how the wood's going to come out in the end. So we're just cleaning out the sawdust from the actual grain. going to come out looking great. It's one thing to note, don't touch us with your fingers after you've actually done that. Oils in your fingers will just end up going back into the grain again and that's not ideal because you're going to notice a difference in the finish. This is brilliant stuff. Um, this is the microcrystalline wax. Um, it's a chestnut product. Uh, pretty small tin, but uh, it goes a really long way. So that's what we're going to be finishing it up with. Uh, it's different from a lot of the other waxes in that you can build up multiple layers with it quite easily and it will actually form quite a solid finish. So what we're going to do is we're going to just spread some on with the lathe off just to build up a couple of uh, initial layers of this and then what we'll do is we'll start sanding and polishing it down a bit once it's up to speed.
Right, now I've got the lathe turned back up again. We're going to give it a polish and uh, get that buffed out. A bit more. Okay, looking really good already. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply another three or four coats of that and then we'll come back to it again after that. Right, we're all buffed out and uh, it's ready now to be taken over and to do the final assembly. So let's get off the mandrel and get into the press. Right, so we got all the pen pieces laid out. Um, I've been quite specific about keeping the alignment of the two pieces of wood so that we can preserve that grain pattern. Um, so let's get to assembling. Okay, we're going to be using just a normal quick clamp for this. Um, so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the nib of the pen pressed into the front end of the tube. So for that, we'll just pop it in. Yeah. Okay, so that's the nib done. Second part of the front section is that we will be pressing in the actual pin mechanism. So with this pin mechanism, the brass side is the side that will go into the back of the tube. Um, I've actually got that on camera, that would be better. Okay, so the brass side goes into the back of the tube and then the pin mechanism will screw into the back of that. So that will be threaded to accept that pin mechanism. Okay, so let's get that pushed in. Try to line things up as best you can. Okay, if you take a look, you'll see there's a line on the edge there. That's an indicator as to how deep you need to push it in. It's not always a 100% accurate indicator, um, but for the most part, if we push to there, you should be fine. Okay, what we can do depends on the tendency of digging in a bit. What we can do to check that is if we thread the refill into it, give that a twist to get it seated, you can tell by the actual projection of the twist mechanism how far it's coming. Okay, so something feels slightly out with the actual threads of this one. 
there we go, so that's screwed in properly. Okay, so we can check the actual projection, make sure that it's where we want it to be, that when retracted, it's fully retracted, and then when it's screwed out, the projection comes out to the point that you want. So I'm quite happy with that one, so we'll carry on doing the assembly. Okay, so that's how it can be set aside for now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to assemble the pen clip. Okay, uh, with these slim lines you don't have to worry too much about wood orientation at this point and the actual grain itself uh, because they can be readjusted closer to the time. Okay, so. Right, let's try that again. Probably fifth time lucky. All right, so as I was saying, um, in terms of the placement of the actual clip, that doesn't make too much difference. All you really want to do is to try and find the least interesting area of the actual grain so that you can align it with there. The actual matching of the grain later uh, is easy to do because these parts can move independently of each other. Okay, so I found what I think is probably the least interesting area of the grain and we're going to press the cap back. Let's get that aligned. Everything's still good. And then we can just draw that down. Right, so there's the assembled cap with the clip in. Next thing to do now is to take the center band and that we will just place over the midsection it's designed to fit snugly on the actual tube itself and then from there we just need to align the actual grain sections now in the Sobrano that's a pretty difficult thing to do because as you turn it down it changes quite drastically so there isn't really a full alignment of grain that you can do with it um, you'll see they, they look quite different so what we can do is we can just choose an area that looks kind of interesting and then we will align it like that. It can always be aligned again at a later stage. So let's just check and see. Alright, so let's do that section and we can align that up with that section. That's just a case of driving the two halves together. Trying to align that center band which they are never the happiest things to align and there we have the pen. I just need to remove the actual paint that they put on it just to keep the ink from drying out while it's in transit and storage. Um, but yeah, that's the completed pen. I think it looks pretty decent. Um, wax finish gives it a really nice feel and uh, it will be nice and durable too at the same time. So slimline kit in gunmetal uh, with Zebrano. Thanks very much for watching.